Yes, Hello. okay. Um, good evening, everyone, and welcome mm -hmm. to another edition of Channel Beam's Google Plus Hangout. And today we're looking at Nigeria's transition, if it will happen, from achieving the Millennium Development Goals to now the Sustainable Development Goals. I'm joined by Charles Nwiki. He is in Amsterdam, in the Netherlands, and also by Alex Opechina, who is in Boston, Massachusetts, in the United States of America. First of all, let me come to you, Charles, and you were first to come on board. What would you say? What is, what is your perception? How, how far would you say Nigeria has gone in terms of achieving the Millennium Development Goals? Um, thank you, Victor, for having me on today. Um, I think um, since the return of democracy, um, since 1999, I would say, excuse me, can you, can you hear me? I've lost the audio. Okay, I have it now. Okay, so I, since the return of uh, democracy in 1999, I think we've really recorded some remarkable progress. Um, but uh, of course, these uh, progress, these are just progress. They're not enough. Uh, we still have a lot to do. Uh, but um, over the years, like we've really seen governments uh, from our passenger to Yara to Abi Jonathan, uh, you know, carry out wide ranging reforms. We've seen privatization taking place. We've seen um, um, funding in primary and basic health and stuff like that. But these are really not enough. But at least they started off somewhere. And today we're saying, well, maybe we are now the most important economy in Africa and things like that. But well, whether they are enough, no, they are not enough. We still have a lot more to do, um, given the resources that are to the country during this period. Uh, all right, um, uh, very well, Charles. Um, but Alex, let me just um, hear from you what your own thoughts on this issue is. Um, when you look at the strategic uh, Millennium Declaration that actually set out the MDG Pro program um, with the declaration in 2000 by world leaders, you will actually find out that the goals are explicitly very clear. Those clear eight goals which borders on eradication of poverty, universal primary education, gender equality, reduction of child mortality, improved maternal health care, environmental sustainability and global development partnership for countries. And when you, can you hear me? Okay. And when you put it on the scale and peer review Nigeria in comparison with other African countries in the light of the attainment of this very clear spelled out objectives, in my fair judgment and fair opinion, I think Nigeria has not achieved in totality the main essence of uh, this uh, Millennium Development uh, Goal declarations. Um, though we, it's noticeable that there are some visible improvement in some areas, in, uh, in areas of uh, combating HIV AIDS and other diseases, I think there was a significant improvement in that, because when you look at the statistic ratios, you will obviously be, be clear, even looking at um, the UNDP mid-assessment uh, mid report, which was, I think, uh, dated in 2008, you know, the index and what even Nigerians knew as what HIV used to be back then and what it is now. We all, it's obvious that the, the, the statistics dropped, you know, from an increased high percent of 4.4 uh, prevalence late in 2005 to at least a drop, you know, uh, to the rate of... Uh, looking at what was the rate in 5.8% back then in 2001. Uh, so I think uh, in totality, there is a lot more that needs to be done. The government needs to sit up if really we must sustain the attainment of these goals in totality. Because other African countries are going. Rwanda, Rwanda which had a very ugly historic uh, past, you know, is improving in times of uh, poverty. The index is there. You look at Tanzania in terms of achieving these goals. Tanzania has done remarkable well in terms of their educational system. So I think Nigeria has uh, come to uh, it has come of age at, at that stage in our national life when we really need to come up and really embrace this project, embrace this MDG project as something 
that is really to our benefit. And our government must first of all lead this, the, the front stage in this, in this drive. All right, now talking about um, government, um, what would you have expected to, the, the government to do? Um, Charles, let me just come to you first before I come back to you, Alex, um, because Alex has said quite some considerable things looking at how other countries are faring in comparison to what Nigeria has done. And, you know, he made mentions of some areas as well that Nigeria has actually made some remarkable success. Not so remarkable, but at least considerable success, now so to speak. What would you have expected the government to do in terms of trying to make this happen? I mean, trying to um, ensure that we do catch up and implement and also make sure that the Millennium Development Goals were achieved. I mean, 2015 is almost over. Perhaps something can still be done to make that happen. Um, thank you again, Victor. You know, when you look at, uh, you know, what government can do, um, just take a look at our national budgets from, you know, from 1999 to date. Every year, you, you see things like uh, funding uh, uh, pilgrimages. You see things like, you know, building uh, um, uh, mansions or guest houses, as they call them, in the national budgets. These things run into millions hundreds of millions of naira for the vice president, for the president. So, you know, this, I mean, then you begin to ask yourself, are these supposed to be national priorities? Like, how much do we really spend funding our health, you know, institutions, our hospitals, our, uh, our schools? I mean, when you look at how much that was uh, budgeted to the, to the, for the hospitals in Asorok and things like that, you see that it actually some hospitals, maybe three or ten hospitals elsewhere in Nigeria, actually do not have as much in their annual budget. So we cannot continue to do things like this and expect different results. We need to prioritize these things in the MDGs. Let me give you an example. During my youth service in Katsuna State, I worked in MDGs project. You know, during this period, um, money was a very big issue. We weren't getting any money. But NYC officials made us understand, well, um, we could speak to this woman coming from Abuja, and there was money. I was the president of the CDS, and I was, you know, we brought in a hotel to speak with this woman. And I was speaking with her, and I was, okay, they were pushing me, okay, you can speak, and there will be money. Well, the woman told me, well, there was no money, and we're not actually going to get something. So um, we have, these things are very well articulated, like he, he mentioned. They are very clear in what should be done. But the thing is that we have, over the years, developed this culture of impunity. Um, monies are allocated for these projects like this. And of course, they are siphoned, and nothing has been done about it. So these are things we have to, as a nation, start to look at again. And they prioritize these things, because no country really uh, grows or achieves the, uh, sustainable development without taking into account the, the future of its young generation, which usually are the future of the country. All right, a very well, nice stories <laughs> from <laughs> Charles while he was a month ago in his NYSC in a yeah. particular northern state. But Alex, what do you have to add to that? I mean, he's just talked about impunity and all that, the government needing to do more, needing to prioritize. Do you agree with him on that, or do you have a different view in trying uh, yeah. to make this happen? Yeah. Yes, yes, Victor. I truly share in uh, his uh, views. Um, the truth is, when you look at the Nigerian society, what is obtainable in other society is not a magic. It's, it's just about we sitting down and asking ourselves very important question, do we really want to get it right? It's not that we lack the manpower, we lack the capacity to do it. Nigeria has got the capacity, we've come of age. Nigeria is a big country. Nigeria is a country. You need to be outside to really see the way people look at you as Nigerians. They, we are known for our resilience. We are known for our intelligence. We actually stand out in anywhere we find ourselves. So when it comes to issues of this Millennium Development Goal, I think the DK is not just particular to the MDGs. It's a DK that has been there over the years. You understand it? And the first thing which I actually feel that for any government to actually move forward on this, such government must actually exercise the political will to actually do so. And how do this government exercise the political will? I think it's an opportunity for the new government, especially the dispensation, the administration of uh, President Muhammad Buhari, 
who Nigerians are actually reposing a lot of confidence in him. This is when uh, people are looking up to government to build institutions, institutions that will not just come out in the media and give us data, institutions that will deliver, institutions that will not consider people in, with respect to you know, um, political affiliates in terms of MDG contracts and so on. We want to see commensurate development projects with statistics that are being rolled out. And this has always been the problem in Nigeria. We see a lot of big data and statistics, but very little is done when you come on the ground. And I think government has to start setting out these priorities in achieving this. And such priority will be, first in my opinion, incorporating the MDG goals in the National Development Plan framework. That should be the starting point. MDG, should, MDG declaration goals, you know, shouldn't just be an entity on its own. Government, if government must exercise political will to achieve it, government should start that by incorporating it in the national development plan of the country. And this is an opportunity for President Mohamed Buhari, who a lot of international recognitions is actually looking at him and looking up to him with the expectations that he would deliver. So I think he has an opportunity to really prove himself in that area. That is my candid opinion. All right, um, thank you very well, Alex. But while you were going on, Ikechi Ugoje actually joins us, and he is in Nigeria's federal capital, that's Abuja. Ikechi, thank you for coming on the program uh, this afternoon. Yeah, thank you, Victor. It's true, of course. Um, quite a lot of water has gone under the bridge before you joined the Hangout. <laughs> but uh, let me just um, hear what your own um, uh, evaluation of Nigeria's performance now in trying to achieve the Millennium Development Goals. Is how would you say Nigeria has fed? To what extent would you say Nigeria has achieved? Now, looking at the fact that we are about to transit to the Sustainable Development Goals in about four months' time. Okay, uh, I would say um, a lot has been done. I mean, I happen to have some connections with a few people who have been directly involved with the uh, MDGs and all they've been doing. A lot has been done, but the challenge we have in Nigeria is these huge disconnects where um, the guys involved in implementing uh, certain objectives that you, you roll out are not able to connect with the people. So a lot, a lot of money is being spent, a lot is being done, but it never really gets to the people that um, really matter. So you see huge budgets and all of that, but there's this huge disconnect. I mean, um, uh, the guys go to work every day and, and put in their best, the best they know how to do. But it's, it's beyond just saying you are playing a role and you are doing something. You need to map out um, strategies and see how the people who are really involved, who, who really should benefit from this stuff, get to benefit from it. There are some projects you see like uh, boreholes, they get to dig and um, um, they get to do uh, community projects. And in two, three months, those things are no longer working. Um, so you just understand that it, it's just a matter of to say, oh, I did something. And um, I think there's a huge disconnect. Uh, secondly, I think a lot of emphasis was placed on the federal and the state government without really getting to the local government level. There's a, there's a huge um, uh, benefit we'll get if the this system called local government really gets to work because um, the guy comes from uh, probably, because I know some of their projects were uh, commissioned through the House of Assembly, uh, Federal House of Assembly, and then he just comes once in a blue moon and sets up this project in the, um, in the community, and he really doesn't even know if the people need that project to be done, if there are other things that they need um, that will benefit them better sets up this project, uh, it may be a water well, it may be one community service or the other. And then after two or three months, nobody gets to use it again because something is broken there, it doesn't get to work anymore. So I, I think the local government um, system that, that, that was set up and implementing most of this project will have uh, made um, a huge um, uh, made headway with the whole MDG um, idea. Um, all right, Ikechi, just before you joined, um, Charles had given us his experience while he was serving in a particular northern state and it was kind of in a rural area where he had 
the opportunity to communicate with some of those people now at the grassroots. But uh, I'll, I'll hold on to that for now. And Alex, I'll come to you. You have um, a background in political science. How would you say this can can be addressed? Now looking at the fact that the grassroots have to be incorporated, like um, EKG just made mention now, it can be incorporated incorporated into this whole system to make sure that the whole thing goes down to the bottom, to the grassroots, to the most, to the people that are most affected by all of those goals that were set by world leaders in the year 2000. Yeah, yes, um, I think Ikechi is right. Uh, for any meaningful development projects to be successful, there must be citizenship participation in it. And that has been a great disconnect in Nigeria because, you know, uh, Prior to my leaving the country for my postgraduate studies, uh, I, I discovered there's this mentality in Nigeria, you know, is a government affair or is not our affair, you know? And when you take a drift away from Nigeria and you go out, you see that people are constantly, you know, holding government accountable for, you know, delivering on their promise. So I think citizens should start it it's not late. People should get involved. The more people talk about it in social platforms like this, the more people come out proactively to actually talk about it, talk about this goal. Because I must be very frank with you, if you really go down in the streets and ask people, um, could you just give us the the eight goals, you know, of the Millennium, eight, eight spelled out objectives of the Millennium Development Goals, quite a lot of people will tell you they don't know. So you have to, first of all, know what the, the, the policy framework is about for you to actually hold government accountable for not delivering on that promise. So I think he is right. People should constantly start asking government. You sign to this declaration. Is this declaration a, a Tea Party jamboree or what? Other countries are delivering. Rwanda is delivering. I gave an instance of Rwanda, which is delivering on the rate of poverty. Considering even the Rwandan genocide, a lot of things that went on in Rwanda prior to 1990. You know, Rwanda was becoming a banana republic of a classical example in Africa, but Rwanda came up on its own. If you look at the poverty ratio, it is, it has dropped. People are, the rate of people living, standard of living, people are, are gradually crippling up. Look at Tanzania. So why is it in Nigeria we can't get there? We have everything. We've got the youth who can actually do this. We've got people who can actually do it. So my first clarion call to what he is saying is that people should start holding government socially responsible for delivering on their promise. And whatever convention, be it international, be it local, so long as the Nigerian government has committed itself to that project, Nigerian government has a social and moral responsibility to fulfill it. So I think the moment me and you, even no matter where we are, keep talking about it, keep bringing it to the doorstep of government, Government will be bound to honor such agreements that they have actually signed. And that is my kind of opinion. All right, talking about government now being um, uh, compelled to deliver based on the statutes and agreements that they signed to. I will come back to you on that on, on that um, message. But just before we continue, uh, Ben Cosmos, Ben joins us. He is in um, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia. Um, ben, good evening and thank you for coming on board. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you very much. All right. Um, so just before you came, um, Ikechi, Charles, and Alex have been given their takes on how they think Nigeria has fared in trying to achieve the Millennium Development Goals, looking at the fact that we are about to drop these goals and move to the next level, which is the Sustainable Development Goals in about three and a half months, so to speak. That is 2016. But what would you say? How would you say Nigeria has fared? Because if you look at all the eight goals that have been that were outlined back then in the year 2000, which of the goals would you say Nigeria has achieved? Ah, I think at this point I will tell you I will tell you I'm playing that Nigeria has not achieved even the Millennium Development Goal. None of the none of them has been achieved. Uh, no uh, ben, one. ben, please just before you continue, can you please? Um, there's a lot of headroom. Can you just put your computer down, or you come? Forward to the computer so that you can be in it. Uh, like so. Are you okay now? No, just take it up a bit more. Okay. Is it okay take, now? No, take it up a bit. Your head has been cut off now. Okay. It is too much. Bring it down a bit. All right, this is fine. Thank you very much. 
Okay. Like what I'm trying to say here is that I think the Millennium Development Goal, I don't think Nigeria has met any of those goals, not at all. Instead, we have dropped every day, every day by day, we are dropping on the, on the table. And now we want to move into, into having a sustainable development goal, which have a lot of things in place, though not too different, not still different from the Millennium Development Goals. Like one of the goals and targets of the sustainable, to have a sustainable development in countries, number one, you have to think of how to end poverty, you have to think of you have to think of how to create job, have a sustainable livelihood and equitable growth for everyone to, to enjoy. You have to think of how to secure and uh, how to secure how to secure and have a sustainable energy, which is power and the rest of them that that, that has that has that has a that, ha, that, that has a vital role to play in the economic growth of, of of every nation, which you can see our power sector is so is so down that we can't even generate up to up to even ten thousand megawatts as in the country. We are still we are still falling between three, four, three, four, three, four thousand megawatts of electricity. We also have to think of we also have to think of how how to how to manage our national resources and assets sustainable. You know that will, uh, our national resources and assets like the NMPC, the, the the oil, the oil we have, and how is it benefiting us? But if you go to the Niger Delta, what you see there is is, is a different ball game of itself. We also have to think of how to empower our girls and women. You know to achieve. To achieve these goals, you know, this gender equality have to play here because women, if you watch in some in some parts of Africa, uh, women have been neglected in in terms of uh, developmental projects and the rest of them. And we have to think of how to carry these women along because when you educate a woman, you educate a nation. So we have to think of how to carry these women along alongside uh, in this in this in this in, the, in having this goal and target of so having a sustainable development you also have to think of how to how to secure how to uh, security is one of the important thing also how to secure our lives and property i mean security is one aspect that if you don't have it even foreign investors will be will be very very difficult they will find it very difficult to come and invest because they will think of their asset if we invest in this country how are we going to make our profit back are we going to throw our money here and uh, put our money here and at the end of the day Everything comes in, and we'll see it burning in flames, and you know, and we have nothing to hold on to. These things are these things are one of the the, the, the policies the government didn't really have to sit down and think in place. How do we get these things done? You know, how to ensure how to ensure we have a very peace and a very peaceful society. Peace is one of the major instruments that, that, that drives an, an economy. Because if you don't have a peace, I don't see any way you can enjoy the wealth you've made. Because peace is one one important thing that we all want to have. Just like you see Nigeria, the northeast of Nigeria, the Boko Haram insurgents. I don't think there's any investor that will go there to invest anything. Not at all. They will only come and maybe stop by in Lagos, probably because of its strategic nature to other part of West Africa, like Ghana, Kotonou, and I know and the rest of them. But I don't think I don't think these things will really help us. If we are ready to move to move into to move away from from the Millennium Development Goal, which I know that we have not even achieved any of them, to having a sustainable development, then we have to tighten our belts and sit up as a nation. The 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 populists need to hold government responsible for for for. For, for the campaign promises they have made, we need to hold them responsible and stop this kind of mind your business attitude. It's not for us, it's for the government. And because of this this attitude we, we have developed, that is why we have our politicians having the mindset of looting our treasures out of the country, looting and looting every day because we have been unable to hold them responsible. We have been unable to hold them accountable. We have been unable to persecute at least these politicians who have done wrong in the past, who have killed our economy, who have stolen money and because we have because we have refused to do that and we have we, we leave it for for some certain for some certain group of people to do so it becomes their own affair it becomes their own affair their own private life they take it as if it is their own right and why the rest the large majority of people are there languishing in poverty and you know sickness and diseases here and there we, you know and this and these things are not healthy for us to 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 to, to really live and enjoy life it will really make us have 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 a better environment to stay at least even having a good environment having a quality environment to live where we can at least i mean even when after working and working you should come back and, and have a very clean environment to enjoy whatsoever you have you have to to put on your table for you and your family to enjoy so this this right. are there we have to really we really have to right. work on those things if we must make if we must make any further progress on these issues uh, all right, uh, Penny, uh, just, uh, 
system to be on overdrive and I was there and I was talking, talking about tech we have eventually stopped but one of the issues that you tapped on was the issue of gender equality and if I have to quote uh, Prof. President Barack Obama in Ethiopia sometime uh, this year said one of the most important indicators that the future of any country is how equally it treats its girls and women now talking about having a gender, I mean talking about gender equality but let me just um, come back to you Charles moving on forward from gender equality in your own opinion which of these goals do you think Nigeria should focus on? I mean we have barely three and a half months to make sure that um, these goals are fully achieved. Which of the goals do you think Nigeria should focus on? I'm very worried about uh, the widespread of poverty in Nigeria, you know, and um, so I think really ending poverty and hunger really is an area that needs to be, you know, tackled headlong. Um, the gap between the, the rich, the haves and have nots in Nigeria is so massive that you would start to ask yourself, I mean, is this still the same country? And the, 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 the look at the what most people in government, you know, the, the, the kind of uh, lifestyle they live very lavishly. And um, most cases, the, what they do is to take money directly from the treasury and fund this lavish lifestyle. These monies are meant for, you know, social projects that would, you know, kind of distribute the resources down to the people uh, lower down the ladder. So I think while well, we should really focus more on projects that um, distribute the resources, we need to, you know, uh, reduce the gap between the haves and have-nots in our society. I mean, we should invest more in capital projects. For it, it's, it's there is no country anywhere in the world that grows by spending 74 percent of its annual budget on recurrent expenditure. I mean, how many people are we even paying this recurrent expenditure? I'm just like they're not up to 20 percent of our population. No country grows like that. Um, by the time we 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 have kind of uh, reversed it, that we're able to spend more on capital budgets. Uh, annually, then we begin to see this gap to close. You see, begin to see more young people in setting up their own businesses. Women in the rural areas able to fend for themselves and their families, to rely on themselves, to take care of everything they need. So by that time, you know, more less and less people will be hungry, uh, poverty will be reduced, and uh, well, our economy will be growing, you know, even at a faster rate because by that time, more people will be contributing to the economy. Um, all right, um, very well. Alex, for you, which of these MDGs do you think should, um, do you think Nigeria should actually focus on? Um, in I think reduction of child mortality is something um, that I think Nigerian governments should actually consolidate on in terms of um, achieving this and looking at environmental sustainability. We were all victims, you know. I'm from the Niger Delta. And uh, we all saw what the the the, the havoc uh, of uh, the, the the heavy flood that befell the country last two three years cost us. You know, there's a lot of environmental issues running from erosion, poor road network, which is affecting infrastructure, and so on. So if we don't address environmental issues, I think there's a day. Uh, we wouldn't have a country to call our own one, Nigeria, call, call, call Nigeria, you know, one day. And uh, if we don't look at the, the rate of child mortality, uh, strengthening primary health care, which I think government still has to do more, uh, is a problem. It also brings into question, for instance, I talk about uh, the environmental sustainability. We talk about the ecological fund. We've been hearing it, ecological fund, ecological fund. How well can we actually quantify what has been done by this ecological fund with the decay of environmental issues that still affect major parts of the country in Nigeria. In the Niger Delta, a region where, for instance, I am from, erosion is like uh, a normal thing. You know, people, you see people, flood is a normal thing. People are suffering, you know, go to, even in the north, there are some parts where droughts is, is the order of the day. You know, 
people are dying every day. Hunger is still there, as my my brother rightly said. You know, but in times of poverty and hunger, the truth is that yes, you can never eradicate this totally in, in, in a society because even here in America you have people who, who are still poor, or people who cannot feed, but the fact is that government must exercise will to demonstrate that yes, they can actually do this. Uh, and Nigerians, it, it has got to a stage in our development plan in my opinion that I feel Nigerians will start looking at it beyond government. People have to start being involved. We have to start being involved Contribute your own quota as a youth in any way you can, be it in an entrepreneurial aspect, be it in any way. Whatever you do, I do it from a mindset, even back home as a young entrepreneur in Nigeria who just left the shores, I do it with the mindset that whatever one naira I gain or whatever one naira I contribute is in the national interest of that country. And when we put Nigeria first, I think the government keys in from our own exemplary life and they will be forced to sit up. So that is my candid opinion. All right, um, uh, very well, Alex. Um, uh, you are encouraging young Nigerians like you in Nigeria and also uh, around the world to put in their own pity cover or one naira, as you just uh, rightly put it. But I mean, <laughs> let me just come to you now. You have a problem with the media now, the role of the media in ensuring, or, I mean, what is it you have to talk about? I mean, looking at the media as the fourth realm of the estate, as we are usually called. What would you say, how would you say we fare in terms of trying to promote these MDGs? I, I think uh, the, one of the major um, areas that the MGs is um, where we missed it was with media. Um, I mean, I asked somebody some days ago about MDG and like, like um, the other fellow, my colleagues, I mean, he was like, Really was MDGs, you know, not even knowing what MDGs, you know, in the first place. <laughs> then how can you now say you want to hold the government responsible or accountable for not implementing it? You understand? So I think the role of the media is a major uh, um, uh, weakness that the whole implementation had. Um, media is very powerful. If you look down on media, you do that to your own peril. Um, if people in the in Nigeria do not the, 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 the people on the streets do not know what MDG is, even at this point where it's about rounding off, then um, they did a very bad job with getting people to understand what um, the whole issue is about. Um, and I think uh, they needed to go beyond uh, just saying you are doing a project. If, if nobody knows that you are doing a project and um, nobody is holding you accountable, nobody is contributing to that project, then it, it's useless. Uh, if, if they really went out with um, publicizing what they were doing, educating people with media, uh, whether it's social media, and uh, these days, because we're really talking, most of this implementation has to do with people in the local government. So they were supposed to have probably thinking of um, um, radio, and uh, these days even GSM penetration is amazing. Uh, I've traveled to some some of the remote, most remote places in this country. And you see the farmer there, you see the local worker there has a GSM phone. So that's a powerful tool um, for them to have used to educate the masses on what they were doing. Uh, because if the, if the people are not aware, then you, you build this project for them and they just let it go. Um, if they don't own that project, there's no how it's going to go far. So no matter how far um, how much they think they've done, because the people were not aware of what they were doing and the people could not contribute their own quota and make it work. So I think if you want to get people to participate uh, as, if, as moving from MDGs now to these SDGs, the role of media is something they really need to um, get a hold of. Um, it's with that uh, proper publicity and education and um, reaching out with this information to people via media that the, the people can own this project and then it, it can now become um, not just a government thing or some parastatal somewhere, it will now be a people project and you will have these things working. So I think a major weakness they had was not uh, taking advantage of the power of media to help them implement this whole uh, uh, project. 
All right, so let's just hope that when we eventually transit from where we are to where we are expected to, the role of the media will not be neglected as it was during the previous or the current plan. But just before we continue in the chat box, um, Charles has been speaking and he says, MDG offices should play coordinating roles, partnering more with the states and local governments to identify basic needs of communities within their domains, to identify their most pressing needs. And he also adds that chances of project failures are increased when they do not address the needs of their host communities. Well, that's um, Charles own also contribution in the chat box, which is one area we also try to promote, that when someone is saying something and they have something in mind, you can just go on and put your thoughts in the chat box. But just in moving forward now and also in wrapping up the conversation, it's been uh, 30, over 30 to 40 minutes of a robust um, conversation on Nigeria's preparedness to transit from the Millennium Development Goals to the Sustainable Development Goals. Ben, I'll come to you now in closing up this conversation. What will be your last word? Hello? Go ahead, Ben. Okay. I, I think one of my colleagues made mention about the healthcare sector. Uh, I would like to throw more light on that sector. First of all, we have to look about, uh, he was talking about uh, the the, the mortality and childbirth and the rest of them. We have to look at the whole package of our, our, our healthcare sector. I mean, if you look at our health, our healthcare sector, how quality, how qualitative is our healthcare sector compared to compared to the ones we have in Ghana and other neighboring Africa? You know, it's so it's so shameful that even at this stage, we can still travel, we can still travel abroad for to receive our medical treatment. Um, whereby we have our government hospitals, and these hospitals are not properly equipped with the with the right uh with the right medical facilities. And sometimes when you go to this hospital, you don't even have uh, uh, even the common drugs, the common uh, capsule, or you can, I mean, the primary the primary drugs you should have um, uh, to give to a pregnant woman during the time of labor. I mean, the environment of these hospitals are, are, are so, are so, are so, are so, so dirty that you can't, you begin to imagine who is even going there to deliver. I mean, that alone will, should even tell you that there's something wrong with our own healthcare package. I mean, we have a healthcare package whereby uh, our hospital systems, are, our doctors are going on strike, our, 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 our nurses are going on strike, the big wife in the hospital are going on strike, and everybody's going on strike. You begin to wonder who will manage this, this hospital for us. At least, you know, these people are there, they should be a standby. Our healthcare sector should be very, very important to us. I mean, because we are, they are there to save life and property. And it also help these women, those who want to give birth uh, to, to, to children, to have a better, to have a better environment, a very good place where they can stay and give birth and not running care, care, uh, uh, helter skelter. I mean, even people dying for child, I mean, child birth people dying because of child birth shouldn't be, even be. I mean, I think we should have we should have almost uh, a very low rate of this incident. I mean, we should learn from other countries. But what we have there, we are not even learning from them. You know, everybody is trying to do his own thing, his own way, his own thing, his own way. I mean, so there are certain, there are certain illness where, where people don't need to die of it. You know, but yet, people are still dying of it, you know. Uh, even a simple, a simple appendix operation that you can carry out, and someone will go for an appendix operation and he doesn't come out alive. And yet, we are not asking questions. So we have to look at our healthcare packages totally. How do we make this healthcare package to be to be more flexible for you and I, for for the common man to to have access to this free free even if it is not free and you want to pay something but receive something qualitative? I'm not saying that the government should make it totally free. Pay something, yes, I am pay something so that because this hospital you run there with money, it's understandable. Pay something, but let them have at least something that is qualitative. Something that is well well to do, something that when you go there and come at you, appreciate that. Look, I have a country, I have a good place where I can take my family to. In terms of having, if, if I'm having any health issue, which I I must say that our 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 women, our pregnant women, really need to have a good hospital for themselves. Our children, malaria and uh, and the and the and the likes of polio, which I'm very happy with the results that has been rocketed so far that Nigeria is almost becoming a polio a polio free nation. Is a very good result so far. I, I've seen coming out from that country, but I think the the, the whole the whole our healthcare package need to be reformed, and I think a lot of a lot of a lot of new ideas and technology we need to we need to begin to think of how to use technology to run our hospital system 
just that just the way it is being done in other parts of the world, other developed countries. I mean, we should begin to learn from them and not do things the other way around. Right. Um, thank you very much, Ben. Of course, we do appreciate your thoughts this um, evening on this program. But um, Charles, let me come to you now also in wrapping up. Do you think Nigeria has what it takes to achieve these goals, looking at the realities on ground? Um, of course, we do have uh, everything it takes to achieve these goals. Um, but we need to reassess our priorities. You know, we need to start funding those projects that, you know, directly impact positively on the lives of our people. The health projects, education, um, capital project transportation, and every other thing that would uh, stimulate our economy and put us on a part of a sustainable growth. Otherwise, we could be just be running around like this. I mean, like I mentioned before, we cannot become a great country by using 74% of our budget to fund recurrent uh, expenditure. That is so, that's not what other advanced country did, countries, uh, you know, did. So I think, yes, we've got everything we, we need to, um, be, to achieve them, but we must start doing things differently. All right, thank you very much. Um, Alex, let me come to you also to get your last word. Do you think Nigeria has what it takes to achieve the Millennium Development Goals? Yes, um, I think Nigeria has uh, come of age and Nigeria has what it takes. But the important thing is that we must actually set out basic priorities for ourselves. And what are these priorities I'll actually propose to the government? One, I think uh, the new administration has an opportunity to, to prove Nigerians right that these goals can actually work and we can get it. And how do they do that? The first point is this. The government should actually set out a local peer review mechanisms. And these peer review mechanisms will actually evaluate the performance of the 36 states of the federations, you know, see what the states in the north are doing and ensure that there is a correlation, at least there is an effort to really meet, make sure that these states have a growing trend towards the attainment of this objective. And secondly, I said it earlier, um, government must exercise the will uh, to actually do this through institutions. It is not a magic, it is achievable. Nigerians can do it and I believe we can get there. Citizens must hold the government accountable. And I also use this opportunity as a platform to call on millions of Nigerian youths. This is an opportunity when we have the, the time, we have a president who I see works with a lot of youths, you know. Uh, it's an opportunity for youths to actually prove themselves. Why? By constantly bringing these issues in the front burners of national discourse. You understand it? Let us not just talk it. Let's start working it. I, as a youth, is in, in that same commitment. I am coming back home to Nigeria with the grace and the zeal and the resilience, believing that in Nigeria, if I can make it any part of the world, I think Nigeria is an untapped market where everybody is waiting for it to bust. So I, I think I will see you in Nigeria very soon, uh, Victor. And thank you for doing the good work. Thank you, channels. Thank you so guys for, for the good work. I really appreciate you guys. You guys have been awesome. It's been a wonderful discussion. Uh, and I look forward to, to see you guys in Abuja very soon. <laughs> All right. Nice work from you, Alex. Thank you thank very you. much. It's been a very entertaining um, a discussion here between um, Alex Obiechina, who is in Boston in the United States, Charles Nweke, who is in I beg your pardon, um, he is in um, Amsterdam. <laughs> I, I, you know, Amsterdam is, is a very big city. It's a city that has a lot of uh, monuments and a lot of um, red light districts now, so to speak, so much attraction that a lot of people would want to come and see. But here I am. I don't know why it just keeps my mind that you are in Amsterdam. It just did for a moment. But, of course, you know, sometimes you just to have to forgive and pardon those momentary a, a, a forgetfulness, which, which just happened to me now. But yes, indeed, thank you very much also to you, Charles. And um, um, in the last two speakers, who one of them is um, Benjamin Cosmos. He was calling from um, Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia, and also Ikechi Ugoje, who is in Abuja, 
Nigeria's federal capital. Actually, Goji complained that he's having internet issues and he hopes to be back, but it seems we're closing the conversation and he's yet not back on the hangout. But just before we go again, Charles puts in the chat box that the government should be more open with the projects. How much do they cost? Who got the contract? What is the completion period, etc.? These are salient questions that, yes, the government should be making available answers to the Nigerian public. But that's how we wrap it up today on this program. Thank you all very much for coming on board and sharing your thoughts. And also for those of you who watched on our YouTube channel, thank you also for being part of the program. Though you didn't contribute, but you did watch and made it also very much more interesting. Thank you all once again. My name is Victor Matthias, and this is a Google Plus Hangout for Channel Speed.